go to their deaths. Edward hated himself. Edward had found it hard to make a stable relationship with women. He had preferred to seduce other men's wives. Yet Britain's new king was stunningly popular. People saw a new king for a modern world. The new king had a secret. He was in love with Wallace Simpson, a divorcee already separated from her second husband. Wallace was chic, American, intelligent, slim, a near anorexic, and ruthlessly ambitious. Edward was passionately in love. His low self-esteem drove him to Wallace, a woman some would call a sadistic dominatrix. She would humiliate him in company, forcing him to wait on her every whim. Edward simply could not marry Wallace. The monarch is head of the Church of England, which forbids the divorce to remarry. The royal family and the British establishment saw it as the king's duty to put the crown before his passionate private life. Edward VIII repeatedly broke the rules. He interfered in politics, and it is a dark secret of royal history that he was probably a Nazi sympathizer. Edward thought himself above the government, declaring in private that he would marry Wallace, that Wallace would be Queen of England and Empress of India. British Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin wanted rid of the king, who he thought dangerous, and tricked the king into asking the government for advice on the proposed marriage, advice that legally the king would have to take, give up Wallace or abdicate. It was a time of great emotional turmoil for Albert and Elizabeth. Albert was paralyzed with fear of being king, of being in the public eye, having to get important things right all the time. He was terrified for his children, who would be unable to live normal, happy lives. Characteristically, Albert was unable to express his feelings. In a letter to his brother, Albert took an assuring tone stating that he knew that whatever Edward would decide to do would be in the best interests of his country and empire. Revealingly, Elizabeth also wrote to the king, pleading with her brother-in-law, Darling David, you have no idea how hard it has been for Albert lately. I know he is fonder of you than anybody else. I am terrified for him. So do help him, and for God's sake, don't tell him I have written. Despite the royal family's desperate pleas for Edward to see reason and save Albert and Elizabeth, Edward VIII chose the woman he loved and abdicated. Albert was to become king. Close to a complete nervous breakdown, he burst into hysterical tears on the shoulder of his stone-faced mother, Mary. Elizabeth was heard to remark, I feel like the proverbial sheep being led to the slaughter. As always, when the royal family runs into trouble, the future of the monarchy, whether Britain needs kings at all, begins to be questioned. The challenge for the new king, his wife and children was immense to save the monarchy. The day and the hour, and almost king's weather for the great occasion. The reign of the previous day... King George VI coronation took place on the 12th of May, 1937. It was a propaganda set piece. Although the country was in the depth of economic depression, no expense was spared to save the monarchy and erase Edward VIII from memory. Queen Mary's dress alone was laden in gems worth $2 million in 1936 prices. The aim was the creation of a theatrical fairy tale fantasy. 
Public opinion was such that the new king abandoned his own name to reign as King George VI. King Albert simply sounded too German. Many, including Albert, feared he was simply not up to being king. City traders were placing bets that the king would not even finish the ceremony. Ordinarily, the king's speeches were written for his disability, with difficult words avoided. The coronation required oaths swearing in ancient, unchangeable language. The new king repeatedly practiced his signature, fearing he might sign himself Albert, not George R.I. The BBC asked to broadcast the coronation live on primetime television. The Archbishop of Canterbury refused, saying it would be sacrilege, as the broadcast might be watched in bars. The real reason was that a live broadcast could not be edited to hide the king's twitches, convulsions and stammer. The ceremony did not go entirely smoothly. Words of the speeches carefully structured by the king's speech therapist were covered over by fingers of officials holding prompt cards. A marker used to make sure the crown was placed the right way round had been removed. The Archbishop of Canterbury was so unwell that a doctor stood by with a hidden syringe of amphetamine to make sure the primate finished the ceremony. George VI was deeply affected by the coronation's religious meaning, the consecration and the dedication before God of an ordinary human. It is a measure of the courage, the guts his father noted, that the new king got through it successfully. We are so particularly together, leaning on each other, Elizabeth wrote to the Archbishop. We are not afraid. I feel that God has enabled us to face the situation calmly. But behind the scenes, a family feud was spiraling out of control between the two brothers. George was forced to talk with his elder brother via the long-distance telephones of the 1930s. Technical inadequacy and David's tendency to talk at his brother, alongside George's inability to respond quickly, placed a great strain upon their relationship. The result was Bertie simply chose to put an end to seemingly pointless conversations. David, used to having things his way, found the decision unbelievable. It was the beginning of an unshakable hostility. Spurred by Wallace, Edward directed his attention to money, insisting he had nothing to live on. Two of the royal family's favorite houses, Sandringham and Balmoral, did not go with the job of king. They are personal property. Edward kept them, insisting his brother must buy them from him. Edward lied. It came out he had a huge secret fortune built up as the Prince of Wales. The king was distraught by his brother's outrageous deception. Following 12 months of bitter feuding, Bertie chose to pay off his brother with the full sum requested, 25,000 pounds a year. After Edward's abdication, George had created his brother, the Duke of Windsor. Edward married Wallace shortly after her divorce. Royal relations were not permitted to attend the ceremony and Wallace was denied the title Her Royal Highness. Both George's wife and the new queen and the old queen argued there was every chance the marriage would fail. And Wallace, who the royal women thought the lowest of the low, would sell and exploit her royal rank. The effect on the king's brother, unable to provide the honor and dignity for his new wife that she so craved and that he felt she deserved, was overwhelming anger and resentment.